As they go back to the seats, let's give God some praise. I believe that a breakthrough has just happened for somebody. Somebody's shoulders are a little, light, are a little lighter. Amen. Praise God. And I'm telling you, that, that might have been a preamble to what I'm going to be preaching about. Praise the Lord. But first of all, I just want to say I'm, I'm so good to, I'm so glad to be home. Amen, somebody. Let me, uh, let me give a big shout out to my girl, Alice. Amen. Reverend Alice Carson. Praise God. She came in here, started tearing things down, had to call up the insurance broker a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girl, amen, somebody, y'all pray for her, and I, I saw Tiate was in here one, one, one Sunday, amen, praise God, I was like, oh wow, we got a double power over here uh, today, amen, but it was good, um, I'm so glad she was able to come in, and she was able to just, you know, keep up, keep up the word, keep up the power, um, I want y'all to continue to pray for our, our minister, our Reverend Barbara Seymour, for her throat, for her healing. Amen, somebody. Amen. I told her she got to be easy. Amen. Be easy. Amen. Somebody say be easy. You got to be easy. I know I've been there. I know how it is. We got to be easy. Just take our time um, because we need you. Amen, somebody. All right. So listen, I'm not going to take up too much time. I'm going to get right to it. I have a wedding to get to, amen, to perform. So let's, let's do what we got to do. Y'all ready for the word of God? Yes. Amen. Let's get to the word of God. Yes, let's get to the word of God. Amen. Uh, Acts chapter 19. Come on, y'all. Y'all get to Acts chapter 19. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. That's the fifth Bible. That's the fifth book in the Bible in the New Testament, right? Let's get right to it. Y'all stand to your feet. That's the protocol of this house. Acts 19, I'm going to read the first seven verses. So how y'all feeling out there? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel good. I feel good. Hey, man, it's, it's good to be back. As, as they say, it's good to be seen. Hey, Amen. Let's give it up again for our music ministry. Praise the Lord for them. For ushering in the spirit of the living God. All right, let's get to this. In the book of Acts, chapter 19, first seven verses, it says, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. And there he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. And Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is Jesus. And on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. And there were about 12 men in all. Now when I read this, uh, the second verse, where the disciples said, we have not heard that there is a Holy Spirit. It inspired me, Brother Jamel, um, for my sermon topic this morning, now I know. Somebody say, now I know. Now I know. Amen, take your seats. You know, in the, in the voice of Biggie Small said, well, if you don't know, now you know. Amen. So one of my mentors um, mentioned to me one day, uh, and he said, he says, don't let what you do not know get in the way. No, don't. Let me make sure I got him right. Don't let what you do know. That's it. Don't let what you do know get in the way of what you don't know. Don't let what you do know get in the way of what you don't know. And so therefore, I'm here to teach to you uh, some things about the Holy Spirit this morning, church. Uh, for those of you who are ready to learn, 
Um, and some of you may think that, well, I know everything about the Holy Spirit. You know, I've been in church all my life. There ain't nothing else that I need to know. But maybe there are some things that you don't know. Amen. Somebody say, I need to know. And maybe God wants you to take a new look at some old things that you can have a new experience. I know some of y'all ain't get that. But sometimes we got to take a look at old things so we can have a new experience. All right. And so therefore, uh, and I'm glad to be, and I know I'm in the right place because I'm ready, I'm ready to preach this word this morning. Uh, and if you're ready for the word this morning, somebody just put their hands together. Somebody just shout out, I'm ready. Somebody just say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Amen. And so the passage in Acts 19 is a powerful picture uh, of something that I call the principle of exposure. Somebody say exposure. The principle simply suggests that God will use exposure to awaken in us an appetite for something you did not know you needed because you didn't know it existed. Amen. Y'all got me? I, I said that the principle simply suggests that God will use exposure to awaken in us an appetite for something that you didn't know you needed because you didn't even know it existed. And God arranges exposure to orchestrate what what I call a holy ruin, where he ruins your life's appetite for anything that is inferior to his vision for your best interest. Y'all better talk to me this morning, church, if y'all want to get this. It is when God gives you a spiritual allergic reaction to settling. It is when we, he makes you intolerant towards those things that you used to crave and settle for. Because God understands the way we have been wired because he wired us. And he knows that once you've been exposed, you can't be unexposed. He knows that once you see it, you can't unsee it. Come on, church. So God, by God's grace, he will expose us to individuals and to opportunities, uh, Sister Trinity, and also to information to create desire on the internet inside of us because desire is the prerequisite for improvement. You can't be improved if you don't first prerequisite with a desire. Somebody say, I desire to be better. And so this is why I believe from time to time, church, that believers need to be reminded that maybe you're what you've been exposed to is an expression of divine providence. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? Providence coming from a synthesis of two words. Pro video. Pro meaning before. Somebody say before. before. Video meaning to see. Somebody say to see. So God sees before. And because he sees before it happens. Is he strategically starts moving the pieces of your life, getting you ready for what's coming that you don't even see is on the way. Amen. Y'all got that? Uh, so come on, y'all. Here it is, right? It is God putting you where you need to be so that you can see what you need to see to become who he's called you to be. Listen closely, y'all. Because this is when God prematurely puts you in a place in your present that will only make sense in your future. I don't know who's going to get excited about that one. But I'm telling you that when God starts using you and you start accepting God, that God will prematurely put you in a place in your present right now. Now, amen. amen. I'm telling you that he's trying to set you up for something in your future. And I'm telling you that if you just obey God, no matter how crazy it looks, no matter how insane it may be, but God is saying, I'm about to show you something and prepare you for something that you don't even see coming yet. But when it does come, you're going to be ready, baby. And I want somebody to understand, that's why I trust God. I don't trust man because man was 
So it is God helping you and putting you in a place before you need to be there. So that you will already be there when he is sending what you need, what he needs to get there. I, I can't even, I got stories on top of stories that can tell you that if I didn't trust God then, there would not be no Phil Craig now. Sometimes it means that you got to sit in a season now that it will only make sense out of later. What does that mean, Pastor? That means that sometimes we become in a place where why am I here? I've been as diligent as I can be. So why am I here? I've been praying all I can pray, but why am I here? I've been going to church every Sunday, but why am I here? And sometimes we got to sit still in a season of darkness, amen, before it makes sense to us or when the light comes later. And some of us have experienced this. And you don't have to take my word for it, right? Because there's some people sitting on your road right now that can testify as true. But when they were sitting in some seasons, they was wondering why they were there. And now that they look back on those seasons and now they see when, when, when I was in it, I was calling it something else. In other words, when I was going through it, I would call it one thing. But now that I'm out of it, I'm calling it something else. When I was in it, I called it a breakup. Now that I'm out of it, it's a breakthrough. Come on, church. When I was in it, I called it rejection. Now that I'm out of it, I called it protection. When I was in it, I called it a closed door. Come on, help me, church. When I was out of it, I thank God for leading me away from the wrong door. Y'all better shout this morning. Now, everybody's not about to feel this, but I want those of you who have enough spiritual discernment this morning to thank him for the closed doors that he put in your life. I dare for some of y'all to praise him for every closed door that he put in your life that you was mad at that moment. Because I cried about it then, but I'm praising to him now. I cried that he closed the door on individuals, but I'm praising that I ain't connected with them now. I'm proud. I was praising. I was praising God about the closed doors that he put on me but before because I knew if I went that route, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. If I went that route, I might have been strung out on drugs. If I went that route, I might have been dead in somebody's trunk of their car. If I went that route, I may not be here with a voice on the, on, on the altar now, but I want somebody to know that God is so faithful. Yeah. That God closed the door for some of us. And I, I'm only talking to the real people this morning. That, that he, he not only did it for me, but he did it for you also. See, God will put you in places strategically to expose you to that which you wouldn't be exposed to if he hadn't prophetically positioned you there. See, so at some point, you got to ask yourself this question. Uh, if you believe this kind of exposure is random, if it's haphazard, that it was coincidental, you got to ask yourself this question. Well, why has God let me see all the stuff he's letting me see? And I'm telling you, it's intentional. Why did God, out of all the people in the world that he could have, that could have saw this, that of all the people that could have been in these rooms, that out of all the people that could have had these conversations, that all the people that could have been in the proximity of this, why did I just randomly end up being exposed to what I've been exposed to. See, God isn't just exposing you to all this just to show you what he don't want you to do, but he is using exposure to awaken you in your appetite, something that he wants you to do, and he wants you to do it in the way that he wants you to do it. Come on now. And sometimes he uses individuals to give you that exposure. Y'all sit down. Not so that you can want what he's done for them. Because then that's covetous. 
right? He wants to expose certain things to you so that you can see what he does. Now, when you see God blessing somebody else, don't want what they want, right? We desire what other people want. Stop worrying about that because that's covetous. But so that you can look at what he's done for them and say, I don't want what he's done for you. But now that I see he's in the business of doing it, I want everything he's got for me. Amen, somebody. I want somebody that's getting this revelation to say, now I know. I said, now I know. Somebody say, now I know. And don't tell it to your neighbor, but I want you to say it loud enough to yourself so your neighbor can hear it. Say, I'm not jealous. I'm just inspired. Don't tell it to your neighbor. Just say it out in the atmosphere. I ain't jealous, but I'm inspired. I'm not jealous. I'm inspired. I don't want anything he's got for you, neighbor, but I want everything he's got for me. I'm inspired. I'm inspired. I'm inspired. I'm not trying to get what you got. I'm just trying to get what God has for me. I'm not here to find out what you have. Yeah, you look good and all that, and I know God is blessing you, but I'm inspired by that, but I'm here to get what God has for me. I know by the time I walk out of here, I'm going to have a word in my heart. I know by the time I walk out of here, I'm going to have a plan in my mind. I know by the time I walk out of here, I'm going to feel more empowered. I'm going to be more edified. I believe that the enemy is going to be more mortified in my life and I've come to crush the enemy's head right under my feet. I'm so tired of going through all the hell that I've been through in 2024. I want somebody to know that I'm not being jealous over nobody else because if God bless you, I might be right next to you. Somebody say I'm next. I don't know. I believe that. It may not be in line. I may be last in line, but I have also heard the word saying that the first will become last and the last will become first. So although I may be last right now, just keep looking at me, baby, because what you see is not what you're going to get. Because what's about to happen to me is what eyes have not seen, no ears have heard, no ears even into, into the heart of man. I want somebody to know I'm inspired by you, but what God has for me is something supernatural above beyond anything that you can imagine or think if somebody really believes in it here somebody say now I know now y'all take your seat y'all gonna rush me this morning y'all take your seat y'all ain't gonna rush me this morning and and so and this is why we must rid ourselves from this pseudo-religious facade of false humility acting as if you have no wants. Come on, let's stop that. People, people make you feel as if you're a Christian, you can't want things. Right? Make you feel like, you know, I want certain things, but no, that's not the fact. The truth of the matter is there are some things that are in your heart and the Bible says God gives us the desires of our heart. That doesn't mean he gives our heart everything we want. It means he gives your heart what you want. And there are some things that you want that he wanted for you. And I need somebody to get this delivered to this uh, uh, in their mindset today. Delivered from this fake religion mindset and to admit I want it. Ain't no wrong saying I want it. I want it in my mind. I want it in my body. I want it in my relationships. I want it in my resources. Uh, Y'all keep acting like you will want it. That's fine with you. But God will eventually remove it from your delivery list if you keep acting like you don't want it. You can act like you don't want it if you want it. But Phil Craig been through too much to not say I want it. I've been through too much to not pray what I want. I've been through too much to not express what I want. All this crying I did, I want it. All this praying I did, I want it. All this shouting I did, I want it. I just want to know if I got like five people in here who ain't scared to say I want it. There's some things in my life I want right now. Matter of fact, God, I can't even wait till tomorrow. I want it right now. Before the service is over, it's 1231. God, I need it by 1232. If there's somebody in here, I want some Prozac Raven in here today who can honestly say, I've been asking for it. I've been praying for it. 
sanctuary. I ain't leaving out of your presence so I get what I came here for. Some came for healing. Some came for deliverance. Some came for things that we don't even know. But I want somebody to know if it came for you, it's okay. If it came for your children, it's okay. Everybody connected to you. You just need to open up your mouth. Don't shout for yourself, but just shout for God for what he's already doing. Come on, all these nights I ain't getting no sleep. I want it. All these nights I've been praying, I want it. I've been crying all night long. I want it. I don't know what you know, but I know Phil Craig wants it. And if you want it, somebody say, I want it. Man, I'm telling you, I watch, I watch the church tell folk you can't ask God for stuff like that. Desires of your heart, he said, I'll give you. I ain't gonna give you everything in your heart, but I'm gonna give you the desires that line up with my, with my alignment. And so, don't be scared to say, God, I want that. Not because you gave it to somebody else, it's because I know I deserve it. It's because I know it's in my, it's in my future. God, I've been praying for it and I can feel. I, I, you gave me a snapshot in my mind, I can see it. And I want somebody to know it's okay to say I want it. So listen, right? In the text here, let me get back to this text for a second. In Acts 19, Paul's on his third missionary journey. What does that mean? It means that Paul would go to specific places. He would stay there for a period of time, make a ministry contribution, teach, train, disciple, and then he'd leave. And then he'd go to another place. He'll stay there for a period of time. He would teach, train, disciple, and then he would leave. Then he'll go to another place. He'll stay there for a period of time. He will teach, train, disciple, and then he will leave. Now the revelation in Paul's reality is a powerful picture of what Henry Cloud calls in a book, which we were introduced to you uh, this year uh, in October, I believe, called Necessary Endings. Henry Cloud says, entrances into new seasons must be preceded by exits from old seasons. Oh my God. <laughs> In other words, you cannot walk into something new if you are unwilling to walk out of something old. Uh, y'all just miss your shout. <laughs> I said, see, some of y'all are stuck right in the middle. You want to hold on to this while you're trying to grab on to that. You keep holding on to this and trying to grab on to that because your faith is not going to allow you to let go of what you're comfortable with so you can grab on to something that has a question mark in front of it. But I've come to let somebody know today that whatever God has for you, you ain't got to question it. You ain't got to see it. You ain't even got to smell it because all you got to know is that in order for me to grab something better, I got to let go of something that's good. It may be good, but it ain't God. I said it may be good, but it ain't God. And I want you to know right now, you cannot walk into something of God if you're not unwilling to walk out of something that's good. And some of y'all need to cultivate the courage to make some exits because if you can make some exits, you will experience some entrances. There are, there are things that are going on in your life that you can't walk into because you're not willing to walk out of something. My God, my God. Now I understand, it takes courage, right? It takes a little courage, it takes a, you know, it takes a little heart to deal with certain things in life that you're comfortable with. But just because you're comfortable with it doesn't mean that you have to be a slave to it. And Paul was able to transition because he knew when his contributions were complete. 
See, you got to know when the, when, when the season is over. Right? He recognizes that it is not my job to fill your cup. It's simply my job to pour everything that is in my cup to pour it into yours. And once I pour everything in from mine into yours, I have contributed to you all that I can contribute. Amen, somebody. See, some of y'all been pouring into something, pouring into something, into a cup that has a hole in the bottom, right? <laughs> and everything that you're pouring into, the cup never seems to fill up because it has a hole in the bottom. And you don't understand that it's never going to clog up because you ain't doing the right thing. And so God is saying, he said, I need for you to have a little more sense. I need for you to have a little more discernment because we get so spiritual in the church. We don't know how to act natural outside the church. We talk in tongues, but we can't talk English. I want some... <laughs> Y'all not even in the GSCC, y'all not even ready for this. I should have took another month off. Amen, somebody. And so he, he, he understood that if I'm going to pour it to you, I'm going to pour it to you. What Paul did, he came, he taught, he discipled, he poured into them, and he left. Yeah, y'all got, got that? He came, he knew what his assignment was. So sometimes we take our assignment as if it is something that is supposed to be permanent. But God is saying, I just called you to be there for a season. Stop making something that is seasonal permanent. And you want to know why you can't grow? You want to know why you can't get better? You want to know why you're not blessed? You want to know why your territory don't expand? It's because you're still stuck somewhere that you're supposed to be in a season and now you're there permanent. That's what happened to Lot's wife. Lot, they told her, nobody looks back Stop looking back. Lot's wife turned around and looked back. And now she's somewhere that it was supposed to just be passing through. And now she's there permanent. Don't be somewhere where you're just supposed to be passing through. And you're still stuck there. Somebody say, now I know. <laughs> because... Sometimes you done poured everything you can in people and in places, and they still don't get it. But if you don't know when it's time to transition, for my note takers, you will, you will then become untransitional. If you don't know when to transition, you will become untransitional. When you lose the desire for more because you feel sorry for people or places that can't grow. Just teach, train, and disciple. And if they don't seem to get it, they don't seem to receive you, the Bible says shake the dust off your feet and keep walking. But don't feel you need to live in dysfunction. Don't feel you need to live in toxicity. Don't feel you need to stay in a dead end relationship. And I don't have a need to be needed in that way. Because I know for myself, I'm not driven by other people's insecurities. I'm driven by my assignment. And sometimes we get so caught up in other people's insecurities, we totally forget about our assignment. And so Paul makes an exit. And I think it's important for believers to know this, Sister Erica, because we don't often make healthy exits. Sometimes your time is just up. But when you don't discern that, Reverend Bill Barbara, you will slander a season or slander a relationship because you got to come up with some kind of criticism that will ease your conscience about why you're leaving. Anybody ever experienced that? They didn't want to be with no more because of something that I wasn't up to par with. Or you just didn't support me the way I was expecting for you to support me. Oh, you just wasn't there for me when I needed you the most. Not realizing that all they are doing is creating an unfounded criticism to try to ease your conscience because you have an unhealthy view on X. 
divorces. I've come to let somebody know. Listen, I've been through a bad divorce, but I got a good, healthy view on exes. I can still call her up and say hello. I can still have a conversation. But if you listen to the word, they'll tell you because you ain't together no more, you got to be enemies. I want to let you know the devil is a liar. The devil did not, the God did not perform a miracle on us so we can be enemies with his children. He performed miracles on us so that no matter what the situation is, he said, you don't have to be naive. You don't have to be stupid. But I want you to love one another as you love yourself. I want you to be your brother's and sister's keeper and not your brother's and sister's killer. And some folk think just because I'm not doing them bodily harm, like as if I'm still in right relation with God. No, no, no. That's not what the Bible wants you to be. What God wants you to be is in a right relationship with the person by mind, by spirit, and by body. That means that you don't have to go hang out with them. But when you come around them, show them some godly love. They may not like you, but give them a hug anyway. They can't stand you, but tell them you love them anyway. And I come to let somebody know, when you do that, that's when you know that you're walking in the spirit of God. That's when you know that God is working in your truck because most people can't do it. So when you do most things that most people can't do, you know you're working with God. Somebody say, now I know. See, what, what, I've, what I've learned, what I've learned in relationship, I got five minutes, is that people would try to paint you like a monster. Right? They tried to say you wasn't supportive enough, and the truth of the matter is you was the only one there for them when nobody else was. Now, I may not be preaching to everybody this morning, but I believe about 75% of y'all know what I'm talking about. And I want you to know right now, those folk were baptized with water. Those people who don't do things in the right way are baptized with water. Those people who slander your name was baptized with water. But for those of you who has been blood washed in the spirit, you don't have to slander nobody's name. You just say be gone and leave. You don't have to come up with an excuse. Just leave. If you're using me, just take what you got and leave. And when you start a new beginning, you need to be able to sit down at the beginning of a relationship, of a conventional relationship, a personal relationship, a relational relationship, a professional relationship, and all you got to do is say, listen, we both too old to be playing games. So let's put it all on the table. I don't want no backhanded motives. Just put it all on the table. And it might be cool with me. Just let me know. Let's put it all on the table. So what does Paul do? Paul leaves Apollos in Corinth and he goes to Ephesus. In other words, he gave them what they needed and he moved on. And I've come to let somebody know, you can't let people create a cancer in you because they treated you wrongly. Because you would get so uptight. You would get so disturbed. Earth, you would get so mad your whole spirit goes off but that's what the devil wants well, I've had people walk out on me I've had people talk about me I've had people slander my name but the truth of the matter is I ain't got no time to be repelling back on Facebook I ain't got no time to be going back and forth on Instagram I ain't got no time to be sending people death threats because what I know is this that when God is on your side, he said, when I'm before you, who can really be against you? Now, matter of fact, if the truth be told, that every time somebody walked out on me, somebody 
somebody came back in my life that was even a step further, that was even a level better. And I want somebody to understand today, don't be so worried about the folk that walk out. I'm going to tell you this, just let them go. If you let them go, then God will be able to put somebody else in your life that's going to be better, that's going to be bigger, that's going to be stronger than what they were. Somebody say, now I know. So let me get through this. Now what we see in Acts 19 is the disciple of John, not Jesus yet. And so Paul asked them this question. He says, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? He said, nah, we hadn't even heard of the Holy Spirit over here. So understand this. Their lack of information has them at a place of spiritual stagnation. And they don't even know it. Right? Because they didn't know nothing about the Holy Spirit, they was in spiritual stagnation, and yet they didn't even know it. And here's what's scary. Because they hadn't heard of him, they didn't even know what they were missing. Y'all real quiet this, eve this morning. And, and, and that's the worst kind of missing. Is missing what you don't know you're missing. So there's this one writer who writes this book on prayer, and I can't remember the name of the book or the author at the moment, but he says, one day we're going to get to heaven and then we're going to run into Peter. And Peter is going to take you to a room and he's going to open the door and you're going to see all these things stacked from the bottom of the floor to the top of the ceiling. And you're going to say, Peter, what is all of this? And Peter's going to say, that's all the stuff that God would have gave you if you asked. And that's the worst kind of missing out is when you're missing what you don't know you've been missing. And this is why I teach us regularly and frequently, ignorance is expensive. Whatever area we are ignorant in, we will eventually pay a price in. If I'm ignorant about relationships, well, then I'll pay a price in my relationship. If I'm ignorant about stewing in my body, then I'm gonna pay a price of my body. If I'm ignorant about manager resources, then I'll pay a price with my resources. Resources, because whatever area that we are ignorant in, we will suffer in. Y'all better get this. I mean, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Ignorance is not the absence of intelligence. It's the absence of accurate information. And these people didn't have accurate information about the Holy Spirit. My God. My God. So they were missing out on what was available to them because they was unexposed. And God sent Paul to expose them to a life of spiritual possibility. Somebody say it's possible. It's possible. And they didn't even know what was available to them. And here's what I love about them. They had the humility to open to take a new look at something they thought they knew everything about. See what I love about real folk? And you'll see that only these type of people will, will, will grow. Is when... Like, even when I give workshops, some people walk out because they feel they know it all. Right? People won't, they won't listen outside of their, their normal box. You know, they caught up in a box. I do church, 11 to 1. That's it. Anything after? I can't do it. I'm busy. I'm doing this. But see, the people that grow are the people that are in the conferences. People that are on the Zooms. The people that are always trying to learn. The people that are dealing with Bible studies. The people that are listening, right? The people that are at the workshops. And understand that they are growing, they are growing, they are growing. They may not see everything right there, right now, but they are growing. And when that time comes, when God opens up the door, they are able to walk in. While all the people that thought they knew everything, God opens the door, they can't even get next to the door. Amen, somebody. And I want you to know that God is opening doors for folk that are willing to walk in because they have already did the prerequisites. They've already sat in the, in the conferences. They've already been to the workshops. They've already met with the people. They've already went out of their box. They've already been praying about it. They're now in a place where their mind is right, their spirit is right, and their body is right, and all they got to do is wait for that door to open, and when that door opens, everything is able to be, is as 
accessible to them. And I want you to know that church on Sunday morning ain't enough. Amen. You need to know a little more than just church on Sunday morning. And so here it is. This is what Paul teaches us in the text. I notice one major thing that maybe we need to take a fresh look at when it comes to what the Holy Spirit is longing to bring about in our life. And here it is. Generation. A regeneration I should say. And this is for people that grew up like me. Where the emphasis was simply being born again. See, when I was growing up, all you heard was about being born again, being born again, being born again. And we're about to, we're about to roll out. Y'all ready? And here, here's what I want you to see. Rebirth, being born again, is, re is regen and regeneration. It doesn't, and so what, what does that mean, right? Let me, let me break it down to you what, what it means and we out. Where the emphasis is simply being born again, that is, it doesn't matter what you did after that. Right. So, this, this is what it means. Regeneration is a spiritual rebirth and renew brought about by the Holy Spirit transforming a person from a state of spiritual death to new life in Christ by depositing them a new nature. That's where regeneration is. It's not rebirth. Hold up, wait a minute. So are you telling me that the Holy Spirit wants to do more than give me new life? Y'all better get this, y'all. The Holy Spirit wants to also give me a new nature. Somebody say a new nature. A new nature. And when I get a new nature, my appetites and impulses change. And that which used to feel natural for me starts feeling unnatural to me. And that which used to feel unnatural to me starts feeling natural to me. So I used to have to try to love my enemies. Now it's my nature to love my enemies. Yes. Come on. Amen. Y'all got that? Yes. Right? People used to do things to me. I used to we wanted to go out and, and revenge. But now, you know what? Just let them go. Maybe they need it. So in 1 Corinthians, well, well, here's the word that the Bible uses to describe those who have new life but are still governed by the old nature. And the word the Bible uses to describe that person is carnal. Y'all got that? In 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, the apostle Paul says, he says this. Brethren, I could not speak to you as spiritual people. Hold on for a second, guys. As spiritual people, although you're saved. But I still couldn't speak to you as spiritual people, and I know it, yes. He says, you as a believer, he says, but your immaturity has limited the kind of conversations we can have. You want me to talk to you about stuff you're not ready for because you have not demonstrated that you have the kind of maturity that could handle conversations that are more than just milk. I fed you milk and not solid food for until now, he says, because you were not able to receive it. And even now, you're still not able. You got new life, but you're not governed by a new nature. I ain't gonna shout on y'all with this because I want y'all to get this. We so worried about rebirth, 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 but we're not incorporating a new nature. And Paul is saying this through a letter. He's not even in Corinth. And he hadn't even given, he hadn't even seen it with his own eyes. And so probably got a little attitude from the people over there. And like, well, how do you know who, what we doing? You ain't even here. He said, here's what he tells him. He says, you want to know how I know? That you're not governed by, that you're governed by the old nature? Because your old nature is showing up. You can tell a tree by its fruits. If the fruits are spoiled, the tree is rotten. If, if you, you say that you change, oh, I'm a new creature in Christ, but your old nature is still rise to the top, then you, there's no regeneration there. There's just rebirth. Amen. You've been, you've been washed by, by, by the water, 
but you ain't been fire baptized in the blood of Jesus. It's a whole nother story. And I want somebody to know today that the greatest impediments to people coming to Christ, coming to the church, uh, 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 and people are not running away from Christ. People come into the church, and you wonder why they come into the church, and they leave the church. They leave the church. They're not running away from Christ because they ran into Christ. They're running away from Christ is because they ran into some Christians that have the old nature still in there as if, if, this, if they were reborn again with somebody new. In other words, you, I don't care what you put on or new. Yeah, I mean, let's get out of here. I don't care what you put on or new, but it will always come up. It will always rise to the top if you still got the old nature. So you can look real fresh or Sunday's best, but when you open up your mouth, when you do some actions, when you get in the meeting, when you are around the committee, and when you in front of the pastor, there's a certain level of respect that should always come about. And if you don't have that certain level of respect, and if you want to talk the way you want to talk, and if you want to say what you want to say, I've come to let somebody know that you ain't been born baptized with fire from the Holy Spirit. All you doing is playing church. And we got too many folk that are playing church because they're so conditioned to want to move up the ladder. They're so conditioned to want to get by the pastor. They were so conditioned to do what they want to do. But I've come to let you know uh, that it's going to be a time when God says enough is enough. Uh, positions don't last always. So if I want to tell you something, it's to worry about the favor of God because when you got favor you don't need position because the favor of God will bring you to a place where you don't need to be elected on the favor of God will bring you to a place where folk don't have to put you in office the favor of God will catapult you into places into power that no one had nothing else to do about so what you mean pastor I mean that there's a difference between position and power. See, the president had the position, but Martin Luther King, he had the power. Montgomery Bus Company had the position, but Rosa Parks had the power. And I want somebody to know that, that Pharaoh, he had the position, but Moses, he had the power. And when you walk into an area of position, the power, I said the power, without rule every time. Somebody say power. Somebody said I need power. Somebody say I want power. And I ain't talking about the show on stars. I'm talking about the real power that's born with the Holy Spirit. So many of us are born and they rebirth and they say I'm born again. But the truth of the matter is they ain't really reborn again until you live fire baptized so I hope you were stretched this morning I want you to be willing to take a, a new look at an old song and get a new experience if you're willing to take a new look at an old song you can experience new things in your life the doors of the church are open today and the Holy Spirit wants to help you in those in that area of regeneration it's not just new life but a new nature somebody say new nature I don't I don't really know what everybody is going through but I do believe that somebody is going through something and whatever it is God is saying he said I can fix that for you and if your, if your day today is a day that, you know what, I need something to cover me, to help me regenerate a new nature. And if that's your prayer this morning, I want y'all to get here to this altar. And I, I don't care what your position is. I don't care what you've been going through in life. It doesn't even matter. Just get to this altar. Uh, because I believe that God is about to do something supernatural 
something a change that's about to take place somebody say a change in my in my prayers for everybody in here today that has come to give their, themselves to a place where I know I'm not perfect God but I, I just I just don't want to keep making the same mistakes that I've been making I need my life to be a little different. I need myself to change. I need, I need you to just, just be the head of my life right now. And if you gotta, if you gotta be in, uh, you know, if you gotta be here at the altar in lieu of somebody else, I want you to come to this altar this morning. Somebody that may need to be here but just can't be here today. Amen. Amen. If you know somebody in your family, a friend, or somebody that needs to be at this altar today and you need to pray for them, there's something in their life that you know, that you recognize is not right, I want you to come to this altar and just come on their behalf. Amen.